Welcome back to Homeopathy at Home with Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Hey, Brie. Um, today we are back to our Materia Medica, Medica Mondays. That's a tongue twister. And we are picking up with Nat Salt. Yeah. One of our cell salts. And it's been a while since we've done a Materia Medica Monday because I've had so many cool interviews yeah. that, I've been, that I've been posting. So if you haven't um, listened to the interviews, go and listen to those. They're I think three. Yeah. There were three interviews in between the last material yeah. of Medica Monday and this one. So that's why we haven't done them in a little while, but here we are. We're back with Nat Self. So Nat Self, remember, is a cell salt. And we did a short little, you know, maybe two minute. I don't remember how long it was. Remember the, the 12 cell salts of Christmas? Was that what it was called? Remember I think so. Yeah. The 12 cell salts of Christmas. 12 days of cell salts. The 12 yeah, days it. Of doesn't, sound, yeah. doesn't sound right, but I couldn't think <laughs> of the other thing. 12 days of cell salts. That's yeah. what it was. So that's on the YouTube channel and on the podcast and on the blog. So if you haven't seen that or listen to that, go and listen to the 12 days of cell salts. And um and not salt is one of them, but we're gonna go a little bit further with it today talk about it a little bit more this is still going to be a short podcast but um yeah so nat salt is number one for head injuries especially when there's been a concussion um nat salt can have eye symptoms like photophobia <clears throat> so another photophobia remedy is nat mirror so the natrum the salts what is photophobia um, where you're too sensitive to the sun. So these people have to wear sunglasses to go outside. Oh my goodness. Well, I, that's a yeah, yeah, but I mean, it might could also just be any light. So like when you have a migraine and you, and the light really hurts or bothers your eyes, okay. that could be. So that also. would be an acute situation where you could use that mm -hmm. with a migraine yeah. and you can use mm -hmm. that alongside another remedy for a headache. Yeah. But you know, if you're very sensitive to the sun, like you can't go outside without sunglasses. You My really, sister is like that. You need to, you, we need to get, the sun needs to go, don't not, don't be looking at the sun, but the sun needs to get into our eyes. It helps yep. the hormones. We talked about that on the sleep podcast. And morning sun exposure helps your body's response to afternoon sun exposure. So I don't remember all the technical terms, but mm -hmm. getting your eyes, getting the UV light, getting the sunlight helps for if you are outside, not for you to not get sunburned, to not need sunscreen. What? Yeah, it's I amazing because that. when we're blocking, I recently learned this in my quest to cut sunscreen out. Uh -huh. um, there's something in the way that it reads the sunlight that it, re it knows to produce what we need to be exposed to sunlight. And those aren't technical terms. Those are like very layman's terms. So don't make fun of me later, people who are listening. But that's why people love our podcast because we keep it simple. Yeah, so that's that a really easy way. If you want the not. difficult research, there is it. There is some out there. I've read it, but I just don't know how to say it that way again. So you can. I love it. Go that's incredible. I didn't know that. So when we went on, so I never used to wear sunglasses at all. When Paul and I went on our honeymoon, he bought me some really expensive, really nice sunglasses and I wore them just because I had them. But then my eyes got very sensitive to the sun and I couldn't, I couldn't go without them. And, um, I learned, and this was a long time ago. I learned about the importance of having your face, you know, and having some sun like come into your eyes. Um, so I just stopped wearing them and it took a little while to get used to it again, but then I'm fine now. I can go lay on the beach, no, no sunglasses. I really have got, I've made myself um, be more careful wearing them. I used to just put them on, assuming every time I went outside and we live in Florida. So yeah. I recently, I mean, the past few months have been really aware that I'm not going to put them on unless I really, really can't stand it. And I progressively needed them less and less. I love Even it. driving, which is cool. Yeah, that is very cool. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so we said head injuries, mental problems arising. So like from most likely from the head injury. So you had a head injury and then you have mental conditions or problems come up after that. Arnica can be a great um, first remedy for the physical 
head injury. And then Nat Self comes in to help the mental piece okay. of it. <clears throat> so would this be a good one for um, like traumatic brain injury people? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And I know people with that and it's, um, it's super sad because a lot of people think they just have to live with that. Right. Well, it can change your personality. I mean, so yeah. many things. Mm -hmm. So, and it can be used, we'll get into that, how it can be used for older head injuries too. I think people don't really, don't fully realize what homeopathy can do. They think, oh, it's great for acute stuff or, you know, if I have a headache or whatever, but I don't think people understand that traumatic brain injury can be reversed with homeopathy. Um, you don't have to live with that. So this person might be suicidal. And you remember when we go through these keynotes, it doesn't mean that you have to match every symptom. It's not a hundred percent. So they could be suicidal. They could be very depressed. Um, all the natrums tend to be a bit close and hypersensitive. So like Nat, when we think most people know Natmuir, they think about that mirror, they're very closed and they keep everything in and they don't want to, they don't want to share their emotions or their thoughts or their feelings with people. They want to keep everything in. So it's like, it's a great, that mirror is a great grief and anxiety remedy for the person who holds everything in, but also constipation. Physically holding in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like right. In there. Um, so I do have a question for clarification. Are these, when you're talking about these mentals, are they following a brain injury or a head injury, or is this a not self person in general? It could be in general, um, but for the most part, following a head injury. Okay. No, it could, yeah, it could like be a in change in them to a very withdrawn, depressed, suicidal person who would who never had these before. Right. So, like, never well since the head injury. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, very much like RM met. And, and that suicidal tendency, just the darkness, they just have this darkness all around and within. And um, Nat Sulf is said to have, um, it's said Nat Sulf has to use their self-control to stop themselves in suicide. So like they have to really, they really have to use, exercise their self-control. This is a big suicidal remedy. Um, they struggle with family duties and they want to be, they want to kill themselves, but they can't because of their family. They can't, they know they can't leave their family. They know it would hurt their family, you know, or they, they don't want to do that to their family. So they're thinking more about their family than themselves. Okay. Um, these are systematic people. So this could be more of a general, you know, out, even outside of a, <clears throat> a head injury. They're mentally strong and emotionally vulnerable. Like a lot of the natrums are. Um, they're very sensitive to music and they can weep from mm -hmm. music. Um, <laughs> that reminds me of great, my daughter, Grace, who's 17 right now. She, when she was a baby, I would sing to her. And every time I would sing, she would cry. Oh my word, that's so sweet. It, it like was, happy it was, little tears. Like she was just, you must be a really good singer. I'm really not, but I love to sing. But so my family had a great time making fun of me that I was making her cry. Oh but yeah, that I is pretty funny. It. I felt it in me that it was like, it was like this. It was like, it was a, a sensitivity. Oh. It was like, a, she felt, she, because when I'm singing to my baby, like that's, that was from the heart. That was pure love pouring out of my poor little vocal cords. <laughs> no. She just felt all the love. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, so she would, she would cry and, um, they're very sensitive to damp, dampness and fluid. So they're much worse to be in the wet, damp weather. Okay. So they're just very sensitive people. Big remedy for asthma and respiratory problems. Um, they are sensitive to water and damp environments. 
So they can be, uh, they are very sensitive to the moon phases, the full moon, the new moon. And again, this reminds me of another, another thing. So, you know, <clears throat> you always hear that um, more babies are born, more babies are born on the full moon or whatever, and whatever else people say about the full moon. Well, I never believed that because I don't know why I just didn't believe it until I started working at the hospital as a lactation consultant. And it literally is true for those of you that don't believe that right now, or, you know, you guys know that I'm, I believe in Jesus and I've, I don't, I'm not superstitious and I'm not, and that's not a superstition. And it's not, um, it's not a, an occult thing. It, it really is true. They would say, like, I would come in on and knowing that it was a full moon that night and they'd say, you got your roller skates on? And I'd say, yep, I'm ready. Cause we, I mean, they were going to be pop baby. People were going to be coming in. Babies were going to be popping out everywhere. <laughs> well, if you, I mean, this is a side note, but I feel like so many things that have gotten weird, um, really were rooted in things God has given us, but have just been distorted to be used in a way that takes glory from God and not in a way that honors God. So, I mean, I think God didn't accidentally create moon cycles. Right. So, I mean, yeah. I think they definitely have been twisted to be weird stuff in search situations, but mm -hmm. maybe another <clears throat> podcast for another day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Asthma attacks more predominant around the full moon. So listen, you guys, if you're having symptoms like asthma attacks or, um, respiratory problems, um, anything, this says, um, has to do with the water balance in the body. Well, anything, any condition that you're having, if you can keep good notes and, um, you might see some patterns like this, like if you're worse around the full moon, there's remedies for that. If you're worse from four to 11 PM, there's remedies for that. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're worse, I'm, I'm working with a, a person who is worse from three at not from at 3 a.m. and at 3 p.m. That's when their things happen. These are things to note and, and we can find remedies based on those times. Um, diarrhea, particularly after getting up in the morning. So that's another, that one is also sulfur. So nat sulfur is what we're talking about, right? So it's the salt and the sulfur. And sulfur by itself has a lot of um, the diarrhea, especially right when they get up in the morning, they have to run to the bathroom. So um, nat sulfur will get up, then they have, they have terrible diarrhea once they get up. Sulfur is driven out of the bed because they have to run to the bathroom to have diarrhea. So sulfur is still just laying in the bed they have to jump up and run not soft once they get up then they okay. have to go yeah um headaches uh, this is a great meningitis remedy um a sensation of something gnawing in the back of their head with this headache i haven't heard that one that's a pretty terrible sounding feeling it really does sound really terrible i've never heard anybody say that before um so again photophobia <clears throat> it's a big liver remedy mm -hmm. so you know when when i think of liver remedies I always go chelidonium lycopodium sepia i don't often think of nat sulf but i'll tell you this last night while i was preparing for this and i read that liver remedy um well yesterday i ate really awful and i didn't feel good <laughs> So I went and took some nat self. <laughs> well, it looks like a, a gallbladder thing too, which like fatty foods are just eating bad, probably yeah. Yeah. aggravates our gallbladder, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's a very, this is a really deep acting remedy, nat self, and <clears throat> it can help get rid of gallstones. That's, That's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. So nat sulf has the yellow discharges, you know, sulfur, sulfur has, is yellow, or has yellow discharges, what I mean. And, um, page two. So this next, did you hear that? Yeah, it was a little, was it a bark? Yeah. Well, it was a triggers being too wild and 
and he and he's getting on Nala's nerves. So Nala, she's checking him. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I'm wondering, Bree, if you want to. Uh, uh I'm recording. <laughs> I'll have to cut all that out. That's fine. Um, it happens. I'm wondering, Bree, if you want to do the, the 12 days of cell salts piece. Do you want to go through that? Yeah, of course. Okay. So this is stuff that we covered in our really short podcast we mentioned earlier um, from the 12 days of cell salts. So some of it might be repetitive, but there is some different stuff in here. So the first thing that we have is, of course, it's number one for head injury, but you, so you can take it when you hit your head, but then also Dr. Jude, who was just on our podcast recently, um, Robin Murphy's wife, she said that um, extensive dental work can also cause these types of injuries. So maybe this could go from mild to major. And if any of you have leftover things after dental work, you could agree here. Um, she recommends not self 30 C for five days for an old injury or six X twice per day for two weeks. And then once per day for four weeks following that. So that's one protocol to consider. There are a couple other ones out there. You could look up, um, for old head injuries. It is the liver cleanser, um, promotes the elimination of water good for foul smelling gas, swollen hands and feet and itchy skin. So that makes sense for the liver and for the water balancing. So maybe pregnant mamas consider nat sulf. Yeah. I wonder if it's in the cell salt protocol at the end um, for swelling. Like if you have some swelling or that itchy skin, I had that actually with my last pregnancy um, and it was my liver, I'm sure. So there are detox teas, but also consider nat sulf. Good. Um, good to know. I'm going to add that to my pregnancy notes. Nat self is the never well since head injury. So this could be headaches or even stuff like epilepsy, um, yellow discharges, bitter taste in mouth. And this note, you're going to have to clarify again. I'm sure I asked you before. Gluba salts. Glauba. Glauba salts. Glauba salts. Um, so they were, so like they're, yeah, I wish I knew the exact, but they're, they're salts that you, they're not homeopathic, but you take them and they help like they'll, it's almost like, yeah. I mean, like if you were to so they eat, help flush the system, flush yeah. your system. Purgative, yeah. Okay. Which is similar to nat salt. Um, and side note, nat salt is not in the pregnancy protocol at all, ever. We need to put that in our notes for, um, I think that's a great one though, for yeah water balancing and it needs to liver support at the end of pregnancy. I think that's a great one we should add in. Agree. Let's do it. We'll have a different yeah. cell salt pregnancy protocol than anybody in the world. Yep. Yeah. And it, I feel like it's um, an easier one to add in than sepia. What month? Mm, I would say, I would say depending on when they present symptoms, but usually it's like 34 to 40 weeks that I, that women typically start getting more swollen um, and that itchy skin, but it could be at any point. I mean, if you're really itchy at 20 weeks pregnant, like severely itchy, that is, you should get blood work done to make sure it's not cholestasis of the liver. That's like, can be really dangerous. But like in my case, I was 39 weeks um, and I tend to get itchy skin anyway, from when I'm not, I'm drinking too much coffee, not enough water, you know, <laughs> not flushing my system properly. Mm -hmm. So I think it's typically third trimester. Oh yeah. Kelsey. Hey, Kelsey. She said, hey, I was Kelsey. so itchy in the third trimester with both pregnancies Thank and you. it is typically liver. My midwife had told me that, um, and suggested some liver teas mm -hmm. like detox support, but not solve. Nice. I like yeah. it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Um, that solves good for constipation. Like we said, worse for cold or humid weather. Um, enema like clears the system. So a person might be cheerful after a bowel movement because it's eliminated. 
Yay. Yeah. I mean, one of my kids, I can tell you, he's a super grunk. I'm like, go to the bathroom. I got to come out <laughs> happy kid. Yeah. Um, that self is good for bronchial catarrh, respiratory conditions like asthma, um, a sick headache, good for colic. So that's something we can keep in mind too. Um, IBS and some of the mentals, like we mentioned before, um, I love how this is worded liverish, mm -hmm. like a jaundiced view of life. Mm -hmm. That's so good. <laughs> and so depressed, maybe personality changes after the head injury. Yeah. Yeah. And the main keynotes, um, to take away from this are worse for the damp asthma, worse three to 4 AM diarrhea after rising and head injury. Let me tell you this. So I wanted to go quickly and look up glauba salts just to give like a really good definition. What I found when I typed in Google glauba salts, the top four, the top one, two, three um, <clears throat> entries are my podcast. And all of the images are from my website. What? So apparently, I need to know what lava salts are. Famous. That is so funny. The 12 Days of Cell Salt series <clears throat> on Audible and iHeartRadio. And what did you look up? Glauba salts? Glauba, the glauba salts. Because I wanted to get a good definition. And then that's all my stuff came up. It's so funny. Um, <clears throat> so right. There's not. And then under that, I'm not seeing anything. So it's like um, Google wants to wants to make it global salts or something. Make it global. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's okay. So I remember though, <clears throat> you know, just in in college, them talking about yeah, it's a very very old old term where they would take these salts, you know, in their whole form as like a purgative thing. So. Yeah, I remember when you're saying that, I didn't know that's what they were called, but I do know about those. Um, that's not self. Yeah, any questions that we need to answer? There are no questions that I see now. <clears throat> Thank you guys for joining us. This was, I like this live deal we got going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, come back here in just a few minutes. We're getting ready to just end right here and come back and start menstrual disorders. So hang out with us if you can. Menstrual disorder, men, menstrual disorder is going to be big. So we need to get started. All right. I'll see you in a minute. Okay. Bye. Bye.